Thanks, Professor Ronning, for joining us. My first question to you is mm -hmm. there's a lot of debate on the open but the highly publicized nature of the Breivik trial. What is your view on this? And also, what do you think is the choice of the people? Do they really want to see so much of an information overload? Or do, they, do you think it's best kept, you know, under the wraps as much as it can? I think that uh, it's impossible not to have uh, very wide coverage of this trial. It is uh, an event that has been absolutely traumatic in Norway. It would be very wrong if the media did not cover it. Um, it's always the possibility people have of turning the coverage off. They don't have to read everything that's written about in the newspaper. They don't have to watch everything about it on television or on hear everything about it on the radio. Uh, and I also do think that it's in keeping with the principles of an open trial, which is a very important democratic principle, that there is so much coverage of this trial. Uh, one can always debate whether this should be on on uh, the electronic media, on television and radio, and to watch the, what degree. At the moment, it's an edited version of the trial that we see on uh, public media. Mm. It's being transmitted to court uh, rooms around the country, so those who are involved in it can go and follow the trial. Mm. Uh, I personally would think that it would have been more in keeping with the principles of an open trial that all of it had been transmitted on television and radio, but the decision of the court was not to allow this. Uh, this decision by the court is, furthermore, it's in line with the uh, um, principles that have been established in Norwegian judicial procedure, but uh, I think that for this particular reason it should have been absolutely open mm -hmm. because of its traumatic nature and because I feel that it's so important to have a full coverage of it. I must also say that I think that the coverage has shown a very large degree of uh, formal and correct procedures in relation mm -hmm. to this very traumatic event. Mm -hmm. Also, my question is uh, that, you know, the Norwegian media as well as the international media have both covered it extensively. Mm -hmm. Do you see a certain difference in the way that they have approached this trial, in the kind of sensitivity that is involved, in the kinds of censure <coughs> that is involved, or any other aspect that you can, you know, perhaps throw light on? Well, I mean, I haven't seen everything that has been uh, covered uh, internationally. I've seen some of it that has been on the international television channels, the 24 hours news channels, such as Al Jazeera, BBC, and CNN. Uh, I don't see much difference there and between the major Norwegian channels. I've also seen a bit of what's been on Swedish television, which has been very similar to the Norwegian one. Uh, what I've seen in newspapers is a bit different because there is a certain degree of, how shall I put it, insidedness of, uh, in the Norwegian uh, way the press is uh, covering it so because they don't have to explain everything while the way that the foreign press has been uh, covering this has been also m marked by a certain degree of uh, having to explain what is really the background to this in, uh, to their readers. Mm -hmm. But I think that all in all, uh, there has been a large degree of respect and uh, proper ability to explain uh, what has been happening. So I, I feel that there hasn't been that much of a difference between the international and the Norwegian press, as I had in many ways expected there would be. Mm -hmm. Also, many are uh, really talking about whether or not Breivik should have been given the kind of platform that he has been given through this trial to sort of propagate his political ideology in the way he planned these uh, attacks, in the way he executed that attacks. What is your view on that? Well, I don't think you can understand what happened without that being part of the trial. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, uh, the purpose of a trial like this is to try to reach some sort of understanding and some sort of enlightenment on how such a thing could happen. And uh, you can't reach that without also giving him the kind of opportunity to view his views as he's been doing. On, and I think that if you look at the 
uh, size of the travel, uh, the coverage, I mean, he has been given little opportunity and uh, mm -hmm. I think it was absolutely necessary. And also, um, as someone who understands the messages and the messages, uh, the impact that these messages have on the public, how do you think that this trial and at the end of it, the public discourse regarding, you know, sensitive issues like immigration and extremism is going to change, if at all? What is your view on that? Well, I, I mean, my, my, uh, my opinion about this is that uh, the way that both the Norwegian uh, public and the Norwegian politicians have been uh, reacting to this, and that goes also for the judicial system, is with a great dignity, and that I think this dignity has been maintained through the trial. And I think if anything comes out of this is that uh, the Norwegian public and the Norwegian society has been able to show its dignity in relation to uh, such a terrible and traumatic uh, experience. Thanks, Professor, for speaking with The Foreigner. Pleasure. Have a good day.